In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Bloody Bowman build. This is a level 150 pure archer build that deals with enemies only with bows and arrows. So if you want to know how to play a bow build towards the end of the game, watch on to find out. So first up, let's talk about the bow that we want to use for this build. We are using the black bow here. Uh, and the reason for that is because although it is technically a bow instead of a short bow, it has the same abilities of a short bow, namely being able to jump and shoot and land and shoot in the same motion. This is very, very important because when you're playing close range as a bow user, being able to shoot twice in rapid succession is very, very important. Also, you're going to be doing a lot of roll shots and jump shots just periodically throughout the game. And another really good thing about this bow as well is that it has the barrage ability and we are going to take full advantage of that in this build. Another thing to note about this bow is that it has both descaling and strength and dexterity and although that's poor scaling in general and you'll find that bows in general have poor scaling, it has decent range and because it has descaling in both you're able to get a little bit more damage out of this bow than you would if maybe one of these was e scaling. So you'll be able to pump both strength and dexterity and get decent damage. The strength of this build is basically twofold. The first being you're able to attack extremely rapidly with this build via jump shots and landing or roll shots, and also attacking repeatedly with barrage, allowing you to plink enemies very, very quickly and deplete their health bars quite quickly. The other strength is the ability to set status effects because of that same strength. So if you want to set poisoned or hemorrhage, you're able to do that. And generally speaking, you're going to use regular trash arrows on regular enemies and you're going to use poison and bleed arrows on stronger enemies because generally, you know, trash enemies just die before these status effects really play much of a role. When it comes to armor for this build, I basically use light armor or some sort of light armor setup in order to be able to have an, a light equipment load. And this allows you to roll further with your dodge rolls. You don't get more iframes this way, but you do get to roll further. And a lot of times you're rolling and shooting with this build and it'll put you a safer distance away from an enemy would allow you to attack again with barrage or to roll shoot again and keep you out of a long weapon reach. So it works really well here. A lot of people are very uncomfortable with light protection in this game or having a lower health pool. And this is definitely not the build for you if you, if you are uncomfortable with those things because the idea with this build is that you are nimble and that you're avoiding attacks and you're rolling around enemies firing bows into them, kind of like a Legolas style build and you're not planning on getting hit. So if you're not very comfortable through dodge rolls or having a lower health pool, then I wouldn't advise this build. I also use the white mask as one of my pieces here. This gives you plus 10% attack power when you set the hemorrhage status effect. You need to be relatively close to an enemy to get this buff when this happens. And this isn't gonna happen all the time because again, you're not gonna waste blood arrows on regular enemies because they're crafted and it takes a while to farm the materials to make these. So this isn't something that's going to happen very often, but I do kind of like the look and style with this build. And when you're fighting bosses and you're up close where you just can't stay at range, you're going to set this status effect pretty regularly and that's going to trigger this effect, which will increase your bow damage, basically. When it comes to talismans I use for this build, I have the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, Arrow Sting Talisman, and the Spear Talisman. Sometimes I'll swap out the Spear Talisman for the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, which increases your attack power by about 20% for 20 seconds when you set the Hemorrhage status effect on a nearby enemy or on yourself, which you could equip a dagger and trigger this on yourself if you want. Um, but that Spear Talisman is good when you're just kind of running around the landscape doing like open world type stuff because it increases your arrow damage against enemies that are mid-attack animation. A lot of times enemies will charge right up to you and you'll roll and attack them while they're mid-swing. This is pretty common with this build and that will boost your damage in those scenarios. I like the Lord of Blood's Exaltation for when you're facing bosses that you know you're going to be up close to and you're triggering that hemorrhage status effect. That works out a lot better in those cases. Or if you just want to trigger it on yourself in a fight a couple of times, you can do that with like a dagger in your offhand or something. Arrow Sting Talisman simply increases your arrow damage by 10%, which is good for all-around damage. Shard Alexander will increase the barrage damage that you do by 15%, which is good. We use this all the time. And Ritual Sword Talisman just increases your overall health, or sorry, damage by 10% when your health is full, which you're trying not to get hit with this build, and this will increase your arrow damage as well. There are not too many talismans that boost your damage. You could use something like the Blue Dancer Charm Talisman if you wore no armor to increase your damage by about 20% or so, which is not a bad choice. However, this will eliminate things like White Mask and any protection whatsoever, so there is a trade-off there. And because we do actually have four talismans that increase our damage, you're going to increase your damage a little bit, but you'll probably have very, very low protection. 
So generally, the way you play this build varies highly dependent on, you know, the sort of enemy that you're facing. A lot of enemies in this game, you can just plug away with barrage and absolutely wipe them out before they can do anything. And some other enemies have shields and you have to prompt them to attack and then roll and attack them or jump away and shoot and then roll and shoot. So you sort of have to learn the movesets of a lot of enemies and sort of gauge exactly what you need to do. Sometimes you can just fire away, other times you kind of got to prompt them and that's just going to vary from enemy to enemy. I typically use the standard arrows and blood arrows for my setup, uh, my two arrow types when I'm running around on the landscape. I don't typically use blood arrows when I'm running around on the landscape very much, but I like to have them as a backup in case I run into a tough enemy that has a huge health pool. I can just bleed them real quick in a lot of cases, assuming they can bleed. Um, but otherwise, you're just going to go through trash arrows and just use them a lot. Because we're using a barrage build, you go through arrows a ton. But at this point in the game, you should be able to afford, you know, maximum arrow count from one of the merchants easily. Like, I think it's like six to 7,000 uh, runes in order to get like six to 700 arrows. That's like nothing. That's like a few enemies and you have max arrows for these. So even though you go through a ton of arrows, uh, they're not very expensive to get and you can go through them very easily with this build. So then generally what I do is when I get to a boss or if I run out of those arrows, like maybe you haven't made it to the next checkpoint, you've got your bleed arrows still there, but you don't want to just chew through them. I'll switch to the serpent arrows in order to have, you know, some physical damage and also to be able to set poison. This gives you about 300 arrows to play with between checkpoints. And because you can buy the serpent arrows just like regular arrows, although they're more expensive, these are the two arrows you want to like focus on. You know, you could also do the same with dwelling arrows. You can buy those if you want, you know, extra damage from magic type. That's also not a bad way to go. But you want to prioritize using arrows that you can purchase, saving your blood arrows for specific difficult enemies that are susceptible to bleeding or big bosses with big health pools. Because again, you have to farm the materials for bleed arrows and that can take a while to do, so you don't want to do it all the time. You can also buy fire arrows as well. So fire arrows, dwelling arrows, serpent arrows, and regular arrows should be the ones that you're using, you know, as you're moving through the landscape. When it comes to stats for this build, I have 44 vigor, 13 mind, 30 endurance, 55 strength, 55 dexterity, 9 intelligence, 14 faith, and 9 arcane. The intelligence, faith, and arcane are simply there because I started as a confessor class. You don't need any of these. However, moving forward, if you do want to increase your damage with this build, if you're going higher than 150, I would argue that increasing your faith up to 25 to use Golden Vow is not a bad way to go because the damage you get from Strength and Dexterity drops off significantly after this point. You'll probably get more damage out of going up in faith, particularly if you already started with a class that already has a decent amount of faith to begin with. One thing that I do want to mention here too is that Arcane doesn't play a role in building up status effects of these arrows because the bow that we're using doesn't scale with Arcane. If the bow we were using scaled with Arcane, then it would. And there is only one bow in the game, to my knowledge, that scales with Arcane, and it has the Mighty Shot weapon skill on it, not Barrage. If it had Barrage on it, it would be the bow we were using for this build. And even though that weapon doesn't have Barrage, it can build up status effects quite easily if you have an Arcane-based build. However, it isn't very good in situations where enemies are aggressive, because Mighty Shot has a very long draw, and because it is a long bow and not a short bow, it doesn't have the jump, shoot, land, shoot moveset that the Black Bow does or other short bows have. So it's not the ideal setup for very mobile bow gameplay. It's good for long range bow gameplay, but it's not good for up close. And this build is sort of an up close, medium range bow build. Vigor is at 44 because you are going to be getting hit with this build. You're wearing paper thin armor and you need to be able to live. I wish this was 50, but 44 is basically all we can squeeze out here very well. Mind is at 13. This is what my class has by default. You don't need hardly any mind for this build. Barrage uses 2 FP per use. That's like almost nothing. You can, you know, spam this ability and hardly ever run out of FP. So we don't really need to put any points in here. 30 Endurance is there to help you meet the light load equip and still wear some armor, but also to increase your stamina. When you're attacking with a bow, when you're roll dodging, jumping, shooting, uh, and when you're just using Barrage in general, you chew through stamina. So having a longer stamina bar is going to let you to shoot more times in a row, making it easier for you to build up those status effects when you have windows to fire than if you have very low stamina and you have to wait for it to recover. And as I already mentioned, strength and dexterity start to drop off pretty heavily around the 55 point, maybe even a little bit before that. So you don't really want to go too much higher with these or you're not going to see a huge increase in damage. Again, I recommend probably taking your faith up to 25 and going with Golden Vow if you want. However, if you don't like buffing, 
you can can keep increasing these to further boost your damage. But at the further and further you go, you know, past this point in terms of level or into NG+, this build is going to perform less and less effective because your damage isn't going to be able to keep up with enemies over a long period of time. And one final tip before I wrap up this build. When I'm using the Flask of Wonders Physique, I like to use the Green Burst Crystal Tier for Stamina Recovery. As I mentioned, you go through a lot of stamina using Barrage particularly, and you want it to come back quickly so you can fire off a lot more Barrages in you know, rapid succession. But also, I like the Windy Tier here that increases the iframes you get on your dodge rolls. It does increase the damage you take, but if you're pretty confident in your dodge rolling, this will make it even harder for you to get hit, and your timing doesn't have to be quite as exact because you get those extra iframes, which can really help out with this build. Stay tuned for a couple more Elden Ring 150 level builds before we wrap those up and go on to 200 ones. I apologize for the huge delay between the videos. I've had a couple crazy things going on in my life right now to sort of interrupt the production, but I will get back to the next ones as quickly as I can.